What do you do when you want all the flavors of a soy sauce without any of the soy? Well, today on WTF, we're going to take a look at umami powder and how we turn that into a no soy umami sauce that we use to make a great chicken teriyaki. Hello and welcome to WTF, where we transform food here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen. I'm Chef Scott Guerin. And I'm Janie Wang, one of the owners of Modernist Pantry. Now here on WTF, every week we talk about unique ingredients and techniques, and we show you recipes that you can do in your kitchen. So remember, subscribe and ring the bell, and you'll get notified of our episodes when they come out. And this week, we're going to be showing you how to make a no-soy soy sauce, or as we call it, a no-soy umami sauce. And this episode is actually inspired by someone we know who asked, hey, you guys have everything that's kind of unique and different and weird under the sun. Do you have a no soy soy sauce? And I was like, no, no, we don't. Um, but then I remembered we have an umami sauce that we launched, umami powder that we launched a couple months ago. So uh, the challenge to Scott was to somehow turn that into a no soy umami mm -hmm. sauce. Um, now, Scott, for people who haven't watched the umami powder episode, can you talk a little bit about umami powder and what it does? Sure. So originally we had an umami powder that was made of soy, so this wouldn't be possible with that. Mm -hmm. But in the last few weeks, we were able to get a uh, no-soy umami powder. It's actually made of fermented rice. Mm -hmm. So it's a very rich and just savory kind of MSG alternative. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you have any aversion to MSG, you can then switch it out with this umami powder. You're going to get all those great, you know, rich flavors. Mm -hmm. uh, and it works great on just about anything. And we were able to make this awesome sauce out of it. Cool. So if you're like, oh, I want to learn more, at the end of this episode, uh, we'll link to that episode as well so you can learn more about umami powder in depth. And I think for now, we kind of we want to stick to what is the process when you're thinking about how do I turn this? It's not just adding water to it. What did you go through in order to turn this into an umami sauce? So I went through the thought process of making a really rich vegetable broth. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to make a, the richest vegetable broth that I can. And if I wanted to make a brown vegetable broth, I would uh, roast the vegetables really, really uh, dark, almost to the point of you know charring them. Okay. Uh, and in doing that, you're going to get a ton of umami flavor, right? Mm -hmm. All that glutamic yep. acid is, is naturally in like um, beets and cauliflower, onion, celery, tomatoes, mushrooms, whatever you want, mm -hmm. you can then make a mixture of these vegetables, coat them in some umami powder to really intensify that okay. umami flavor, and then just roast them really richly. Simmer, simmer them like you would a stock and add a, uh, enough salt to bring it up to the levels of a soy sauce. Okay. And that's basically what we did and we achieved it pretty quickly. It's a, it's a simple thing, but it's delicious and we were able to Take it even one step further. Okay, awesome. Cool. So I think I'm going to get into the demo here just so we can kind of look at what we're dealing with. Right. So I have a little bit of uh, neutral flavored oil. I wouldn't suggest going with a uh, olive oil or anything like that mm -hmm. because that can you know kind of burn and you'll get some odd you know um, flavors out of it. So right. I'm just going to coat my vegetable quickly here with that. Okay. And do you recommend that people use the vegetables that you're listing here or is it just any vegetable? Sure. If you want to make this exact sauce, use these vegetables in the recipe. Okay. But if you have other vegetables, it's totally fine to throw them in there. Yeah. I just wouldn't suggest, you know, making one completely of tomato or right. completely of peppers or completely of beets because it's going to be very, you know, whatever that vegetable is forward. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think it's a great way to make use of extra vegetables that you might have on hand or, you mm -hmm. know, it's about to go bad. It, why not Why not roast them and turn them into an umami sauce? Yeah, and if it's scraps that you can't generally use inside of uh, a stock or whatnot, then mm -hmm. it works great in here. So I'm just going to put a little bit of umami powder on these. So they're coated in the oil. Now the umami powder will stick really well to the outside. Mm -hmm. Just mix it up. Cool. Yeah. So it's pretty simple. This is a smaller batch. Obviously, mm -hmm. the batch you'll make is much bigger because you're going to be making about a, uh, a pint to a quart, depending on how um, how much you want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not everyone needs a quart of 
uh, umami sauce. But okay. I have that and I just lay it out onto a sheet pan and then I can roast it in uh, like a 400 degree oven until mm -hmm. it looks like this. Okay. And one thing we sometimes talk about is people want to know exact times, but in this case, you're not even going by time. You're kind of going more by the look. Yeah, I'll give you a, a general mm -hmm. time, but uh, it's every oven's a little bit different. So mm -hmm. your oven may be 10 degrees warmer than mine or vice versa. So it's not going to be exact, but I would definitely go by look. You're going to get pieces that look like, you know, you know, slightly caramelized tomato, mm -hmm. then you're going to get pieces of onion that look like, yeah, they're pretty well charred. So mm -hmm. all of those things are big uh, components. What make this delicious is you'll get the flavor of, of the tomato, but then you get like that really rich, deep charred onion flavor, which will all meld together and make a delicious sauce. Okay. So Sounds after great. I roast this, it'll look like that, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to add some water. about a quart of water to the recipe that we make here. It's just enough to cover the vegetables, right? We want it to be as intense as possible. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of reduction will happen through the simmering. And then I have some salt. And that's basically it. But if I were to just take this right now, mm -hmm. you can notice it's very light. Right. Yep. So I do have to have that simmering process, or if you wanted to basically brew this and just let it sit in the refrigerator, but that would take very long. So just simmer right. it. You're not going to change the flavors if you simmer it, right? Okay. But you're not like, you know, doing a boil on it until it's all reduced or anything. Great question. Because, yeah, if you boil it, you're going to pull, you know, break apart all those uh, vegetables. You're going to pull out any pectin. Okay. And you're going to really kind of change the color and you're going to change the uh, the texture of the sauce as well. And it's not going to look as it's supposed to look, right? Okay. It's going to get cloudy. You want it to be as nice and clear as possible or it won't be clear because it's black, but it'll mm -hmm. be, it'll be um, refined. It'll look beautiful. Okay. So after I do that, it'll look something like this. If you want to just right. scoop some of that out, sure. there may be a little bit of oil that sits on top, mm -hmm. but that's totally fine. As long as there isn't like a big, uh, you know, separation of oil, you're, you're fine. You can absolutely okay. save this. And this is what it looks okay. like after the simmering process. Oop, making a mess. Sorry. You can get a nice shot of that. Mm. It's really beautiful. Mm -hmm. It's dark. It's rich. Very flavorful. And now you can take this and you can replace it one for one yep. wherever soy sauce is used. So other mm -hmm. sauces and things like that, which is what we did. Yeah. So this is actually really nice. Like it has a lot of that like depth of flavor from all the different vegetables. It, you know, and it has all the umami. It smells amazing. Um, it smells way better than the soy sauce. <laughs> uh, but it doesn't have any of that quote unquote artificial flavor of MR MSG. And we love MSG, so no knocks against <laughs> MSG. Um, and I will say one thing is that when Scott was just tossing sauce, I was like, that's a lot of salt. Um, but when you taste it in here, this one's actually not even like crazy salty. Yep. So you can definitely adjust the saltiness level depending on what you're looking for. And yeah, your you can do level. it by, by taste mm -hmm. 100%. If you like a low, low sodium soy sauce, you can make a low sodium umami sauce very easily. Mm -hmm. It's all going to be up to you. We, th the way we did our recipe is between the umami sauce and the salt content, it's going to mimic what a traditional soy sauce is. So if you like it less, make it less. All right. So and uh, one of the things I really like about this recipe is that, you know, I asked for the no soy umami sauce, but you actually took it one step further and you made something else. What else did you make? So I took it and I made something that's really, you know, soy sauce is, uh, associated with it, which is teriyaki sauce. Mm -hmm. So I took the umami sauce and I added some mirin, some brown sugar, some honey, some uh, grated ginger, and uh, I was able to make a really delicious teriyaki that sticks to the outside. It tastes delicious. It looks like teriyaki and no one would really bat an eye at it because it's, yeah. it's wonderful. It is So teriyaki. we have some there. You can see how beautiful it looks. It's got this nice yeah, sheen to it. it. It's slightly thicker. And okay. uh, actually in a, in a minute we're going to make a uh, chicken teriyaki stir fry that we Ooh. can then eat. All right, well, let's clear up this table and we'll be right back. All right, and we're back. We're about to show you how to make an easy weeknight teriyaki with a no soy umami sauce. But first, I wanted to talk about the giveaway. So, if you're totally inspired to make your own no soy umami sauce, no soy teriyaki sauce, and you want to learn how to use this recipe, certainly the links will be in the description below and you can enter to win a bag of umami sauce, a 400 gram bag, by leaving in the comments below something that you would make with it. So easy enough. So we hope to hear from you and enter to win. All right. Now, Scott, let's get, get, let's get to the good part, the cooking part. <laughs> yeah. 
Let's sh let's see some teriyaki. All right, great. So it's actually very simple. Okay. So I'm just gonna make sure my pan's nice and hot. I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. I did pre-cook the chicken for this, so this is a quicker demo, if we can. So mm -hmm. I have some bean sprouts and some sugar snap peas, a little bit of bok choy hearts. I pull out the, the small bok choy hearts. Mm -hmm. Some mushrooms, the umami sauce that has been turned into uh, umami teriyaki, and then some chicken thigh that's just been sauteed until it's been cooked all the way through. So pretty simple. Great. So I'm going to start with uh, mushrooms first, just to get a little bit of color on them. Mm -hmm. So we all know how to saute things, hopefully, if we're this far in these videos. So just going to cook this down. Hopefully I can get a little bit of color on them. I don't want to overcook because I am going to cook uh, with some of the umami sauce to get a, a bit of a reduction on it. So Okay. So just cook it just for a second. And then once that's done, I'm going to add in my bok choy last, uh, just because it's the hearts of the bok choy, so there's little stems in there, so they, they will cook rather quickly in the sauce, but I want the leaves to remain uh, uh, nice and green and beautiful. So okay. I'm just going to add in my sugar snap peas. I'll save my bean sprouts for a final thing to add. No, I like my bean sprouts like pretty much almost raw. Yeah, so. exactly. Just mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah, and I like the fact that once you've made the soy sauce and do umami sauce because of the high salt content, you can keep it for a long time. You don't yep. need to add any preservatives or stuff in it. Just toss it in the fridge, right? Exactly. Just throw yeah. it right in the refrigerator. And my chicken. Chicken's already done. Or about 90% of the way there. It'll definitely finish in this. You don't want to overcook. Mm -mm. So if you're going to pre-cook any of that chicken, just make sure the outside's cooked and the inside will finish, especially with the umami sauce. Mm. Don't worry if anything sticks to the bottom of the pan. Nope. The sauce will deglaze it. Yeah. And my bok choy. Mm. It smells really good. <laughs> Even though there's no umami sauce in it yet, it already tastes really good. Yeah, we kind of stick with flavors that are going to work with umami anyway. So. Mm -hmm always make things better. Yeah. When people are thinking about you know, what they want to do in order to use in the base, is there anything you're like, um, every vegetable except for this, is there anything that you think might ruin it if they toss it in, or you think anything goes? I think ju just about anything goes. Okay. Uh, just know if you're going to use like a lot of peppers, um, bell peppers or anything like that, you're mm -hmm. going to get some pepper flavor to right. it. So just make sure it's equal amounts. I wouldn't make all bell peppers. I wouldn't make all tomato because you're going to get right. a very you know, straightforward flavor of that. Mm -hmm. I would definitely always do a mixture. So I have my umami teriyaki sauce here. And this teriyaki sauce that we made has a small amount of uh, cornstarch in it. Mm -hmm. So it, it's slightly thicker and there's sugar in it as well, sugar and honey. Mm -hmm. So as it reduces, it's going to thicken up and really stick to the outside of all of this great stir fry that we Ooh. have here. Yeah, it's now it's smelling it even smells better. Oh my god! It smells really good. It smells yeah. like a, a, a real teriyaki, which is nice. <sighs> so we'll cook that. Let this reduce down for just a minute or so. Good. All right. So I'm going to add in the bean sprouts just at the end here. You can garnish the top of this with scallions or anything that you, you want, cilantro. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to be really delicious on its own. And then just put it right on top of some rice. I like stir fries just because they're so quick so and so easy. So easy and always tasty. Like you can't really go wrong with them. Especially with this sauce. Mm -hmm. Janie, please. All right. I'm going to grab a piece of chicken. All right. <laughs> mm, it's really good. Great. <laughs> That's exactly what we wanted. It's a little hot. <laughs> but I was like, ooh. Taking oh. one for the team. <laughs> you know, it's absolutely delicious. I, I think you know, taking removing the soy from it, using the umami sauce makes it perfect teriyaki soy sauce replacement. It's it's phenomenal. <laughs> I hope you give it a shot. Um, and that about wraps it up for wraps wraps it up. Wraps it up for us here. 
Uh, you can definitely check out more. The episode all about umami powder. We'll probably toss something else here that's fun as well if you want to find more exciting recipes to try. So from here in the Modernist Pantry Test Kitchen, I'm Janie Wang. And I'm Scott Garen.